Welcome to the Week 10 JWB Special Team Spotlight, where we give you a consumable perspective on defensive and kicker streamers for the work. Here to do their work so that you do not have to. Do any new listeners? I'm Skyler. This is JWB. 20 returning listeners. Y'all are the absolute best. We're trying to get to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. So if you go down and smash that subscribe button, it'll be much appreciated. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. All right. As always, I just want to remind you guys that our streamers for the week are always rostered almost to 55% of leagues. If I told you to just go pick up Dallas's defense and Justin Tucker, it would do us no good. So just want to get that out there. I will recap last week. We were six and two in our calls last week. Another fantastic week that puts us to 44 and 21 on the season, which is a 68% accuracy. I will take that. We hit on Groupie Dicker, Boswell, New England, Los Angeles Chargers, who were our sleeper there, and they hit as the number one defense of the week in Green Bay, all his top 12 finishes. And then we missed out on well, the Giants, as you finally fell, they were defense one over the last month. Well, last week, they finally hit a wall. They were the worst defense on the week. That was our one miss, but it was a bad one. And then Haversick, he missed a 50-plus yarder, which would have put him comfortably in the top 12. So I'll take that one, but let's get things rolling. We're rolling into kickers. Now, for you guys who are just watching the Kicker Club, I want to remind you that all of these players are rostered in less than 55% of leagues, so you can definitely go and check them out and see if they're on your waiver wire. We're going to start with Brandon McManus this week. You can go to versus the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers are 20th on the season against kickers. You might think on paper that the 49ers are an intimidating matchup, but it's just not been that way as of late. They've allowed the sixth a uh, few team points over the last month and subsequently the third most points for place kickers of late. Brandy McManus is only rostered in 37% of leagues, which is a plus 10% boost since we put our transactional tidbits uh, earlier in the week. So on Tuesdays, if you want to get ahead of these calls and you want to get a defense or a kicker on waivers so that you don't have to come here and get them later in the week, make sure you check out on Tuesdays. We drop our transactional Tibbet episodes. I just drop one or two there. They can get ahead of waivers on. And then I list all of my calls on this show here. But Brandon McManus was featured on there. You know, perhaps the 49ers defense does level up after their bye, but we're going to ride McManus another week after his bye because he was the place kicker one over a month long stretch between weeks four and eight. And then we also have a juicy matchup next week versus Tennessee with McManus. So I would expect him to be back here at that time. Should his roster ship stay below 55%. Our next call on the week is going to be Jason Myers versus the Washington commanders. Myers is rostering just 47% of leagues and Washington is 29th versus kickers. Uh, Myers is tied for place kicker 19 on the season, but Washington is, they lead the league in points against, yards against, and they're second in touchdowns against. The commanders stand games through an aggressive offense, which always bodes well for opposing kickers on offense is set up to score sometimes north of 30 points. Seattle has the third highest applied team point total at 6.5 as home favorites and what should be the bounce back spot that they need. Our third is a repeat name. He's been on here now four times. He said every single time we've called him. That's Blake Groupie at the Minnesota Vikings, who are 24th against place kickers. He's only 24% roster, despite being the kicker four on the season thus far. Despite being lackluster in efficiency, Groupie is still atop the league in field goal attempts, which gives us a safe floor play here. Groupie has contributed 73 points to the Saints this season, which is fourth most amongst kickers in the league to their teams. This matchup should be a dogfight, and Groupie should be needed. Our bonus this week at the end, usually I give a couple bonuses because I have repeat names like Group A there, but I didn't have a fourth defense that I felt extremely confident in this week. So I just went ahead and did one kicker. I'm going to give it to you now so you don't have to wait for it at the end. That's going to be Matt Gay at the New England Patriots. Matt Gay is only 54% roster, so he just sneaks under our radar here, but he should be way more, should be 80 plus percent as he is the kicker three on the season. And New England is 28th against place kickers on the season. So we're going to be over in Germany with this play and gay should be in lineups not to mention his season thus far but new england is that ideal matchup as we alluded to with an uninspiring offense leaving teams in favorable field positions versus a middle of the pack defense kickers have feasted against new england the colts offense is also just what we like to see for a healthy kicker climate now we're moving into our defenses for the week for you guys who are just tuning for the defensive clicks all of these options are rostering less than 55 percent of 
leagues. Our first defense for the week is going to be the Indianapolis Colts at the New England Patriots, who are 29th against opposing defenses. New, uh, the Indianapolis Colts are only rostered in 15% of leagues, which is a 6% boost since our Tuesday transactional tippets episode. I did drop two defenses on there to get ahead of waivers. So definitely make sure you check out that show it drops on Tuesdays where you can get a call or two before waivers clear. So you don't have to necessarily come here, but still come check us out and see what other streaming options we have for you on the week. Now, the Colts are the defense 14 thus far on the season, but they've been the defense four in the last two weeks and had a weak winning type performance in week nine for us. The New, New England has the sixth least total yards per game and the second lowest points per game, but they do find themselves against the Colts here who allow the third most yards against and the second most points against. So on that front, they do match up pretty well. The defense out here, the defensive output here for the Colts is going to come from they have 14 takeaways on the year, which ranks seventh in the league, and their 12th best 25 sacks to date. New England is middle of the pack in terms of sacks allowed and fumbles, but Mac is not shy of interception season, with New England having the seventh most. This is a matchup that may flirt with the over, but it'll be a nasty one where the Colts hopefully build on a big week nine for fantasy. This is an aggressive play with a bottom third potential dropout, but it also has top five potential all over it. So if you are willing to take a risk in a league where maybe the other two options I have for you today are not rostered, the Colts are your weekly flyer, but they could flop as well. Now, one matchup that absolutely I don't think will flop. This is our safety play for the week. It's going to be the Seattle Seahawks versus the Washington Commanders. We're tying this in with our Jason Myers call, just like we did tie in the New England or the Indianapolis Colts defense with our Matt Gay call. Um, Washington is 27th versus opposing defenses, and Seattle's only rostered in 49% of leagues, which is a 14% boost since our waiver wire transactional tidbits episode. But I digress. They're tied for the defense nine on the season, and they are passed there by. The Commanders have 22 total touchdowns, which is ninth most, but they've given up 44 sacks on the season and nine interceptions, which is second worst and fifth worst, respectively. Uh, Seattle is 12th in quarterback pressures and eighth in sacks, so this should be the get-right week the Seahawks need as six-and-a-half-point home favorites. This should be all over Sam Howell and give him headaches in this one. As we mentioned when we got into this call, this is a very safe play. Our last call for the day here is going to be the Las Vegas Raiders getting it done yet again against the New York Giants. Now, the Giants are 30th against opposing defenses, and Vegas is only 39% rostered as the defense 16 on the season. But they've been the defense two over the last two weeks. They've been very solid. They didn't come from either blow up games like necessarily the Colts did. They've just had two consistent weeks in a row. Interceptions have shockingly not been as bad as a problem as we would have thought for the Jets, if you were to guess, but they've still coughed up the ball on the ground at a decent rate and have allowed the third most sacks against. We hope momentum continues here for Vegas. This may be the week the shoe drops on Zach Wilson's fairy tale. This offense just doesn't score enough points. They're averaging the third lowest points per game and the second lowest yards per game. This is a really high floor play, but of course, unless we get enough takeaways, the ceiling might not be there, but we're hoping to replicate the last two weeks where Vegas gave you a very, very safe floor. But that's all we have for you here. As I mentioned, when we got into things today, our goal for the end of the season is 2,500 subscribers. If you can go down there and smash this subscribe button, it would help us immensely. If you enjoy best ball, go check out underdog. Use code JWB for a deposit match up to $100. They have stuff all in season. It's where you get to draft teams and you get to go against real competition with real prices, with real money. But you don't have to set those lineups and go and do your waiver claims every single week. If you still participate in season, go check it out. And a couple links in the description, our Discord conversations going all of the time or Cubs cutter we would take on every single player whether it's dynasty that's where I find this most useful leading up into the season and every single week it is very easy to follow click it is self-explanatory and if we don't have a take on a player that is recent enough for you go on discord and let us know and we will make a take for you if we can fit them into an upcoming episode the last thing in there is the patreon you can get my show sheet notes for this and my show sheet notes for everything I'm doing I'm now putting up there on the patreon as well as a couple other bonus features and our full Dynasty ranks, and you can ask me a million questions in my DMs, and I will never ever tell you that you are bothering me or ghost you. So definitely go check it out. Uh, it starts at less than a dollar a week, so it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, but that does it for us here. You can find all things JDB Fantasy Football. It's just at JDB Fantasy Football on all platforms at JDB underscore FF on Twitter. The pin tweet has where you can find our full team's information. Go follow them. They are some of the best follows on Twitter in the fantasy football space. But I'll catch you guys next week. 